Okay, so last time we had just got back from uh, the meeting arc with uh, Ruslan Ulmer, uh, at which point we did some some truths were revealed about the world around you, uh, where Sean learned that things are not quite what they seem, and all the fairy tales that he heard or have some truth to them. Uh, in the midst of his research, he actually did get the idea or the thought that the Rosen Ulmer is actually probably a vampire, and the wine that Carl drank has had probably a little bit of blood in it. That's probably fine, though. The doctor, Dr. Luke Rue, who is the, I don't know, called the handler of Montre, but the guy who found Montre initially, uh, has asked if you guys could uh, fly him and escort him through back in Peru where Montreal was really found in his tomb to see if he can investigate further. So that way, hopefully you can find a empty suit that you can see what soul is inside the knife. I also learned that uh, Carl's brother, I can't remember his name at the moment. I'm blanking. Walter is an yeah. SS Walter. officer. <laughs> yep. This is an SS officer who is currently who was in egypt where the b team were at uh trying to get something from an old tomb that was revealed uh whether he actually got it or not it remains to be seen and uh and sean dublin did a large endeavor to of pettiness to extremely inconvenience Ruslan ulmer due to the trans trans transgressions that he put in place though not directly leading back to him but mostly leading back to him the pettiest revenge on a vampire yeah. I didn't make any attempt to hide it. You say you didn't put any attempt? You did plenty of attempt to hide it. No, I did no attempt to hide it. Okay, that you did it? Yeah, that bitch better keep his, my name out of his mouth, too. This okay. motherfucker ambushed me on a goddamn train after selling me defective goods. Uh, you know, I, they work sometimes. One of them's only lethal to normal. Yeah. Only to what? those of us lung-bearing party members. Non-metallic or wooden throats. One out of six chance. It's trying to choke you to death. Who wants to live forever? Uh, a lot of people. That's that's that causes problems. I'm pretty sure that's every vampire story with someone that's wanting to live forever. Maybe not every story, but a lot of stories. So I think you, you all agreed that you are going to go take the doctor to, to Peru and just uh, come back to later if Ruslan becomes a problem in the future. Well, I mean, I think we'll come back later to refuel the plane and report back in and go drinking. Of course. So yeah, if Ruslan becomes a problem, we'll also come back. <laughs> That's what I mean. You're you're saving that problem for another day. You're just going <laughs> to... Let him stew over being... Yeah, I don't know that we're... We're not saving a problem. We've, we've found a solution to being fucked with, which is we're going to show him that we're not to be fucked with and that it can escalate very badly. You know what? I actually just send him a letter. I send him a letter <laughs> and I expect it will take like a week to get there. So that's a week of being fucked with. And it just says, Mr. Ruslan, my team and I are not to be fucked with. If you do anything like this again, <laughs> we're going to drop objects on your house. Period. <laughs> are you threatening to TP him? <laughs> no, we're going we're gonna to drop like bricks and shit and punch holes through his roof so he dies from eggs and toilet paper, paper. <laughs> Jesus. no we're not gonna eggs and toilet paper <laughs> it's not a mummy uh, we're gonna swing all the way the other direction and see how many torpedoes we can drop on his house oh, just gonna buy, you know, I mean, bulk that is buy the classic use of the catalina <laughs> just bulk buy a bunch of anvils just drop it down a couple pianos <laughs> Looney Tunes Look, yeah. I can agree with the anvils, but the pianos are so expensive for their weight. Why would we do that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to imagine like a Worms Armageddon style flock of 20 anvils coming out the back of an aircraft and just absolutely <laughs> hammering a house. <laughs> so yeah, Pondo, I send that letter to let him know that we're not to be fucked with. Okay. And like, this is the final word. This is it. Don't do it again. What do you put as the return worse. address? My estates in Ireland. Okay. <laughs> which will be forwarded here. But there's no reason for him to know our exact address. That's fair. I'm just making sure. I'm, I'm sure your house will be fine. It's not like... Sean, listen, Sean is a public figure and a journalist. His parents are both rich and famous. Well, one of them's rich and one of them's famous. <laughs> it's not like finding where he lives is terribly <laughs> difficult. You know what I mean? Like, if I was, you want to hit him at home, it's not that difficult. No, I was making sure you didn't just like send it back to this airfield <laughs> that we live at. No, the the main lodge. Yeah, yeah. This is a secret organization to some extent. 
it's not like we go around telling people who we are. Of course. I'm not Tiberius Stormwind. And this <laughs> is not Draconia. I mean, I guess it is a secret organization if you just don't tell people. And you never, ever launch a very familiar and very iconic plane from it over and over again. I don't know it's that not they very know familiar. that they... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know that they know that we have this plane, right? Like, it's uh, never been connected to us in any way. Not yet. Yeah. It the most certainly would have been called... if the whole initial chase plan back in China had occurred. Yeah, I was going to say, the only people who would know are all the dead Nazis being attacked by Nazi ghosts. <laughs> they hadn't had a chance to see it. Well, now, were the ghosts the Nazis too? I thought that they were just they were Chinese ghosts. It's one uh, guy body snatching Nazis. <laughs> well, did you take... No, you took the Catalina to Italy. Uh, even then, I don't think it would really to matter. A private airfield, I, yeah. will, I will have you recall. Oh, that's right. It was. Any private yeah. car service took us away. Okay, that's fair. He did that's take just... a temporary hit to his money uh, to set up all of our accommodations to show up in Rome. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yes, you haven't caused, what's the word I'm looking for, major obvious appearances. Now, granted, granted, uh, Walter would definitely know. I mean, if Walter found out there was a plane, it looked like this, he'd be like, oh, I know that plane. <laughs> yeah, so, I, I mean, it's going <laughs> to... He helped me get the plane, so... Yeah. <laughs> Look, we don't know about that. I can't cover oh, yeah. my bases for that. I can only cover my bases for the bases I know about. Yeah. So yep. it's at, at the moment you're not trackable due to plane, but eventually it will happen. Fair enough. Much like eventually you'll be trackable due to car. Actually, I probably know about car. The very stubby dingo. Okay. Anything anybody want to do at the lodge before they before you all head out? I sent you a message about the two letters I was going to send before we left. Yes, yes. Hmm. But otherwise, no, I'm just excited about our new uh, long-distance transmitter site. No, I don't think there was anything Montre particularly wanted to do after he got repaired. He just, like I said, he rearmed himself as far as he felt was, you know, adequate. Carl will probably plan out getting across the ocean uh, while other people are getting ready to go. Gets his Indiana Jones map back up. Precisely. You gotta, you gotta reset the, uh, you have to erase the red line each time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's as far as recap goes. That's all I can think that happened last episode, other than just a bunch of, uh, looking into how to kill a vampire after possibly, after making the hypothesis that, as, uh, Ulmer is a vampire. You're, listen, don't put the names, don't put the words, you made a hypothesis. I made a dice roll, Pondo, and you told me he was a vampire. I you did. didn't say, here's a hypothesis you came up with. He might be a vampire. What you said directly was, he's I a say vampire. he's probably a vampire. Right now, okay. did I say, did I say, uh, if I said he's a vampire, yeah. It doesn't matter, because I don't want any audience or my fellow companions thinking that I caused this. You caused <laughs> this. I did. <laughs> I did. If it turns out later that he's not a vampire and he's some other form of blood drinking undead i'm not gonna be like oh wow i was so wrong about him being a vampire what i'm gonna say is well that's where the dice rolled the gm told me vampire that's fair uh, Look, i'm saying all of that while i'm creating a little like <laughs> i want to say like a, a bar plus sleeping area because we keep getting on this catalina i'm gonna personalize part of it for me interesting uh describe I'm how thinking, you're gonna you know are you, are you just Depending on how much you're doing is whether or not Carl will have a conversation with you about it. <laughs> I think a couple of laundry lines with sheets hung up just to, you know, create a little private area. And oh, then so uh, on like a cable where you can open up the drop, the, the bomb bay. What? Why yeah, would I sleep just... over the bomb bay? <laughs> I mean, there's always My a God. catwalk that goes over top of it. It's just that if you open it up, it lets the air go and dry up the clothes faster. I... This isn't for. This is not for clothes, though. It's this for is privacy, not for. I'm laundry. putting sheets up for privacy, oh, okay. like like in a hospital. Okay, so the, <laughs> the 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 small compartment with the four bunks in it, we could hang curtains so that each pair of bunks can be you know closed off. Sure, but I also want like a writing desk and like a small bar, and <laughs> the equipment I would need in order to maintain my firearms. 
the luxury and, bath as well. So, oh no, come on, guys. This is not that big of an ask on something as big as the Catalina. But I think that the other thing that we haven't really talked about is uh like journalism. So probably a a fuck ton of newspapers, basically everything you could get in southern Britain. And every time we stop, throw the old newspapers out and buy the new ones at whatever air yield we're at or local town. And just keep abreast of what's going on in the world. Listen, I'm still a journalist. I still have stories to write. It's just that those stories are going to be like, hmm, Nazis bad. Nazis summon ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm gonna so have to uh, publish to very select publications. I would say, have you published anything as of late? I think probably, but uh, it's it's probably like um, opinion pieces. Like, you know, I'm sure this Mr. Hitler guy is gonna back down one one day. You know, now that he's out of prison and uh well-established chancellor of the german government i'm sure that he's gonna back down i mean appeasement historically has always worked and yes there are rumors that he wants to expand his naval fleet to three times its size but we're british just keep our chins up and we'll carry on whether he does that or not it's fine uh <laughs> the the olympics is planned for to be in berlin germany next year so well, I'm and, sure it won't end incredibly embarrassingly for Mr. Hitler. So there yeah. is there is desk space on the Catalina. Oh, so, so you're plenty. probably taking up the uh, navigator seat. I mean, historically, I, I I that has been my seat on this plane. Right, and so essentially, you took off any sort of like maps or anything off it and just claimed it for your own. No, that's crazy. I feel like I would just put them at the desk. I don't, I don't just want to be yeah. like, all right, we're not going to. We're on a plane. <laughs> There's no GPS. There's no radio communication. We need those maps. Yeah, there's uh, yeah, there's there's already plenty of desk space, and I'm sure we can like mount a, a small shelf in the in the navigator radio room to put okay. all your bottles in, and we can put like some uh, a little bit of roping for retention. So just to be clear, I also have to pick really specific bottles because wine does not hold up to being shaken. Anything you put on this plane will get shaken. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's probably just going to be like really non-reactive stuff. Like I think like vodka, just like high grain alcohol sort of shit. That's it. That's it. We made it into a big thing. I don't feel like it needed this much talking about. But uh, just, uh, now, now I'm looking up how big the navigator. Oh, okay, that's actually sizable. That's a lot. I've got I've got some cool cutaway pictures. Okay, that that's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. It's probably about a good five or six feet wide, which is more than I was big. I, I forget that the Catalina is actually pretty sizable. Yeah, it's 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 a boat that flies. Yeah. <laughs> I think the only other person is probably I don't think anybody else has actually met Doctor Larue. I've never even heard his name before, so I've I've said it a couple times briefly, very briefly. I know uh, sound just refers to him as a doctor, yes. or the doctor. Uh, he's he's about an average height man, about blonde hair, French, blue eyes, wears the big round circular glasses, wears the lab coat because he earned that doctorate. It is a pleasure to meet you all. I hope Montre has been not very in your way. I say with a perfect French accent. It hasn't caused me any problems. It's been helpful for me anyways. This is good. I am glad you all had to had to uh, take up on my request. I do need to know how much stuff you plan to bring. I need to weigh your stuff. I need to know how much. I need to. So I got to figure out the flight plan here. Right, right. Montre, could you go to my room and grab my kit? Of course. Is it where the normally is? Yes, of course. There we go. One second. And whatever luggage you're bringing. So <laughs> Montre leaves, comes back, and he's got uh, like a huge uh, backpack that has like a pickaxe, a spade, pretty much everything for like archaeological digs on the back of it. A large bag for luggage on his right hand, and then another bag of just various other supplies on his left hand. And like the 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 backpack is almost as is about the half the size of Montre. 
That should be oh, it's a very light pack this time. All your your clothes and everything? That that's all in there? Oh, not just clothes. Tools, research notes, stacks. Okay. Well, uh Montre, if you want to help me out, we'll weigh that in and we'll add some food to the cargo hold. Of course. So I can do some math. Maybe more than happy to us. Then I'll leave everyone else to talk to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Bye. Yes. Because... It is uh, a pleasure to meet you all. Dublin, I have heard very many interesting things about you. Yes. I hear that you've recently had your mind, uh, what's the way to say it, blown? <laughs> I'm quite curious, Doctor. Who are you talking to that would tell you that? Uh, Who do you know outside of this group of people that would tell you that? I, w I walk up to him and I stand directly in front of him. I say, who do you know? Uh, William Bates. He, he didn't say it that way. He just mentioned. Okay. Uh, how do you say? Because I know that you are a GM controlled character and they were trying to take a quick pass. But I also want to establish, and I get real close to him, that plot consistency is very important to me. And saying something <laughs> like, who do you know in a room full of people you don't know is really fucking scary to somebody. <laughs> you said that. And buddy, I'm not even in charge. I point to Effie. She is. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, wait, hold the phone. What? <laughs> this is very confusing. Look, reading her book, not even paying attention. What? So, <laughs> look, I have to say, I've only known you for about thirty seconds, but I like you better than the explosives guy. Right. I have heard he's very volatile. I slap him on the shoulder when he says that. Right. Well, has have any of you been to <laughs> Peru or a jungle of some sort? I assume we're heading deep into the jungle then. Oh, absolutely. It's going to what was initially thought is just a set of Incan Empire ruins. Turned out to be a lot more. Very exciting. Very dangerous. Danger? Anything we can do to mitigate that? Big guns. What kind of danger are we expecting exactly? Ah, uh, all of it. Hyperthermia, hypothermia. Uh, how do the big guns help there? Uh, the predators that are also there. Ah. Uh. Plus whatever we find in the ruins. Because I, to be honest, once I got to Monterey, I didn't want to stick around any further. There was four people that was on the same trip with me when we found Monterey. And myself and one other person were the only ones alive. Would you say that we will require a support team of expert guides, hunters, pack haulers, animals in order to traverse this jungle? Yes, that's why I got you. You that's are the... <laughs> I am the guide and you guys are the hunters. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how long until? Okay. I, I forgot to mention, by the way. I'm saying all of this very Irishly. I turn to <laughs> Kane and I say, "Mr. Bauer, how long until this aircraft takes off?" Earliest six yeah, eight like, hours. Oh, six to eight. Okay. <laughs> I have some telegrams to go send to agencies in Peru to prepare for our arrival. <laughs> I will not be... Listen, I've been on safari in the, in the dark continent before. Do we still do we still really shittily <laughs> call it that in Britain? Let's assume that they do. Even if they don't, Sean is a fucking moron. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so I definitely call ahead and make sure that we have a team of, like, people with... I don't... I'm, again, I don't trek the jungles of Peru, but I assume something like horses or donkeys or mules and people with the supplies to know how to keep those donkeys and mules alive and us alive in the jungle. Because none of us have the skill to know how to survive in jungle. And this guy doesn't sound terribly confident. So Are there are just phone books in Britain that tell you how to telegram the. <laughs> I assume that as a Commonwealth citizen, I just telegram the local consulate and get their advice on how to do things. Uh, make a... You'd be shocked at how, in the past, consulates were really, really useful because there weren't phone booths, so you just asked your local ambassador, hey, give me the hookup. I have money and power. Make a persuasion. A persuasion? Indeed. Fine. Crawled over the line, Pondo. What more do you want from me? You did. <laughs> you want to leave it at that? Or you want to try to get a raise? No, Pondo. I ran up this hill, and I'm good with where I'm at. Okay. So you actually find out that the current, uh, current any other guides or escorts, so to speak, are currently reserved by someone else. What would failure have looked like in this case? Uh, you just gotten a no. Well, this is also a no, isn't it? Yes, but it's no with a little bit more information. I see. I ask who has reserved them. Ah, uh, yes, of course you did the 
Not leave with that Dude. promotion. A Dr. Ignacio Cueva. Dr. Ignacio Cueva. Yes. A I G N A C I O. Uh, last name. I want to say it's Cueva. I'm probably butchering that. Uh, C U E V A. He is a renowned archaeologist that is currently uh, in the area. I'm going to go off that name and take a guess that he is either Peruvian or Spanish. Uh, Spanish. Okay. So. I'm pretty sure Peru, Peru is Portugal. I think they speak Portugal. I could be incorrect. Yeah. That. So my assumption is, is that this guy is from fascist Spain, which is not our friend. Hmm. I don't know that there's much we can do about this. I guess we just know something's going on. All right. I just filled the whole team in. A Spanish nationalist has arrived and has already pre-purchased everything I wanted to get my hands on. But I say it really Irishly while I'm... holding a glass. <laughs> do you want to out try to out-purchase him? I feel like that's super dangerous, right? Like, I know you're offering that, and it does seem like something that might be a good idea. It's also but something you've done. It is. But in this case, we're going to be there personally. And I feel like this is the kind of thing that would tear a village apart. You know, like, oh, we have a contract with this one guy, but somebody else offers us more money. And, you know, half the village does one thing, half the village does the other thing. You know, like, unless I get a critical success here and completely overwhelm this guy, I feel like it could be bad for the people involved. Does Sean Dublin care about that? I think that Sean is starting to care about things a little bit. I like that. I think he's come to recognize that he might be a giant asshole ever since his conversation with Montre. And he's trying to care about things because he is smug and charming and no one has ever given him any boundaries. That's what I have for you. I don't I don't think I'm going to... When we get there, it might be a different matter. But for now, I'm not going to fight this over telegraph line. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... I'm not going to initiate this until we know more. Okay. I Okay. I appreciate the offer. It does seem like something I might have done. It's I'm something you have done, do, essentially. Yes. yes. Yeah. But I'm not <laughs> going to do that. Okay. Uh, I, there's 60 hours. So do you want to look into the doctor? Yes. Then give me a research roll. Now, hold on. I'm an investigator. Am I capable of getting any? You will get your, I think it's a plus, plus two. two? Yeah, okay, good. Well, you know was... that noise means I rolled really high, right? Yeah, yeah. It, uh, it almost rolled two eights, at least on my screen. Uh, so 12. a 12, that means you do raise twice, which means... So yes, he is a renowned uh, a, a renowned archaeologist who recently made a huge discovery about a couple of years ago. Uh, a long, previously with his old partner, though his partner and him have a falling out. The partner ended up being essentially proclaimed as a hack and reputation and fame just all went down to under blunder for them. Uh, but since then he has been picked up by other rich nobles and whatnot to be uh, essentially hired on to go find them things. That way they can put hang up on their walls, knickknacks, whatever. Classic British pastime. Yeah. 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 <laughs> to which he, he does find said things though. He mostly uh, poorly pays other people and just takes all the credit for it. I don't see anything wrong with this. I will telegram him and say that I will be in the area as part of a journalistic investigation, and I should be there within, I don't know, how long does it take to fly from Britain a week? You... Is that reasonable? Or it, we're going to be flying for a couple of days straight. If, was... you, if you help me with the flying, we can yeah. fly pretty much 24-7. Sure. And I think the, the path that I looked at, because I've been really enjoying nerding out over this plane, <laughs> it should take us it 24 7 flying if we have no hiccups it'll take us five days to get to peru you absolutely need to build in time to land the plane gas weather yeah that sounds like that's what he's doing yeah, yeah i'm i'm saying i'll tell him that we'll be there in about one week could be as early as five days would love to have a sit down and chat huge fan of his work regards sean dublin and i tell them when they're typing it out for the telegram to make it very irish oh and his uh partner was a dr dawson dr dawson yes 
You seem like you're baiting me to investigate this Dr. Dawson guy, but I refuse. No, you can find that <laughs> later. I was giving you that information because you rolled a 12 instead of just an 8. I appreciate that. So you are you're scheduling a interview with him, correct? Yeah, I'm sending a, an interview request. Like, hey, would you like to sit down and talk? Okay. Have, have a cup of tea. That's commonwealthly. Fair enough. All right. Uh, I guess at that point, is everybody good to go? Anything they want to do? Any sort of... No. We just help them pack the plane. Get in the car okay. on if we're taking it. All that jazz. I check to see if Effie speaks Spanish. Uh, I believe she does. Sorry, go ahead, Cotton. No. So that's a good question. Uh, she's not. I think I had to drop Spanish for that other language. I took Latin. Okay, well... Interestingly, we both speak Latin now. Uh, I don't speak Spanish, but hopefully the Latin will get us by. I mean, yeah, I believe she taught you Latin, actually. Yeah, let's say that's true. That's, okay. <laughs> my under my my understanding was that I paid a hot nun to teach me Latin, but <laughs> it's been what? a while since that episode. Uh, you did. We went to the. Yeah, yeah, we yeah were... you're right because you didn't want to f you know that you're trying have to try hard at something. I didn't want any. Went to a brothel to yeah. get a. Yeah. Um... Yes. Yes. Listen, easy money for those hardworking young women. All right, easy money. Yes. <laughs> Teaching some random wandering around noble some words. So you're fluent now in all of those languages you picked up. I mean, fluency is really don't not not like completely fluent, but pretty close. Is he conversational in all those languages? Uh, let me review the language rules, because I don't recall. Uh, D6, a speaker can carry a prolonged but occasionally halting conversation. So, Oh, okay. Well, Carl so probably exactly chats. exactly like how I normally communicate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, D8, yeah. you're fluent. Yeah, Carl probably talks to you in German. Yeah. When it's yeah, just the so two of us. Yeah, yeah. Oh. We do, for practice, we do all of our navigational talk in German in the cockpit. There you go. Carl was really excited because because there's one other person in the group that also speaks German. But who is that? We don't know. Unless they come forward. What is German? (laughs) I think you do know because I think Effie has spoke German in front of Sean. I believe so, too. Because yeah, yeah, Effie was, that, uh, was Sean's to pay attention to other people. <laughs> yeah, Effie was Sean's translator for the German people. Ah, of course, of course, of course. But still, you can join us when we're speaking German and do things Germanly. It, just trying to help him practice a new language. You say, you just make sure you start off the sentence with "I speak like German." This is a real fucking reach that no one is gonna get. But one of my favorite scenes from Babylon Five was uh, when Londo and his aide, Veer, talk about uh, Centauri opera. And then the the two of them start singing the opera, and it took them hundreds of takes because the guy playing Veer couldn't get the Centauri words correctly in singing. And so the one correct take, literally, like, everybody is sighing and going, oh, my God, he finally did it. <laughs> in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that so that's my reach is that you know me and me and Kane are just like drinking and doing German shit with maps and singing German drinking songs and occasionally having Effie come in and and do German stuff with us. It does mean that you'll be able to read all of his charts now because he he writes everything in German. <laughs> that's okay. I would have to care. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not trying to learn flying. Listen, the words on the paper aren't really that important compared to the angles, the lines, and the numbers. And I assume he uses the same numbering system the rest of us use. I assume <laughs> too much. Really? Do You want to tell me that he invented an alternate number system? Possibly. <laughs> he might have his own 13. way of doing the system. <laughs> Instead of using angles, he uses radians. I just inscribed it in ancient Sumerian. Plus, oh I'm, my god! I'm just waiting for the point that you're going to. He doesn't number do... things. He doesn't number things in decimal. He uses hexadecimal. He's a fan of alternate math forms. <laughs> hexadecimal. <laughs> Why? Good old Common Core. So people will hire him to fly. Is Common Core <laughs> even a thing anymore? I have no idea. <laughs> 
I was I'm only just, even vaguely aware of its existence anyways. I'm just waiting for the day that uh, Sean has to, has to fly the plane because he claimed that he could. I mean, he doesn't have... The, do, you, do you have the skill? I don't think you do, do you? I, at this point, we've done enough of this that Carl knows that, that he, he's not really a pilot, but he's good enough and pays enough attention to watch the dials and monitor the plane in a straight line. Oh, it's because I have him. Not, but he's not going to say anything to anybody else. So as okay, long as everybody else thinks he can fly, Carl feels like it's the play thing. That's man, his you are. It's going to be real rough when he actually has to roll it for it. I mean, I'm still on the plane, so you just have this future vision of him jumping into another plane while flying next to our plane, and we're like, "Okay, fly that one now." And he's like, oh, "Can I come back now?" Yeah. Okay. Anyhow. <laughs> Since Kane graciously calculated out the five day trip. We, the theme song plays acoustically, and the globe slowly turns as a red dotted line goes to, I don't know, what's on the east coast of Canada, and then I assume somewhere in the Carolinas. I would assume yeah, we'd be going American from aviation. England I mean, to New York or something to stop. That's a, that's yeah, a wait. long flight. <laughs> We could maybe swing all the way to New York, but if anything were to happen with the weather, yeah. we wouldn't make it. So it'd be better to either stop in like East Canada or Greenland. Okay. Oh, Greenland or Iceland, yeah. The flight that I the, the, the real world flight Fair that I based this off of, <laughs> the the real world flight that I I looked up to figure all this out stopped in Greenland and then Canada and then worked its way down the coast. Interesting, interesting. How are we with Denmark right now? Do they are we cool with that? They get uh, occupied in the war, right? We're basically allies with them. <laughs> I think we're cool. Yeah, we can go to Denmark. You're not affiliating yourselves with the nation nationality, so I think it'd be fine. I don't know if you know this, but sometimes people don't like it when other people from different countries land in their airfields. That's fair. But you also have money. <sighs> <laughs> no, my character has money. That's, that's what I'm saying. Your character has money, so it'd be fine. I'm not going to the intricacies of your relationships with separate nations. That's how well. you can figure out a flight plan. I, listen, I'm just making sure we don't fly into Nazi-held territory at some point during this. All right? Here's what I know. Kane's character may have a complicated backstory with his brother who might be an SS officer, and we killed a bunch of fucking SS officers. <laughs> Let's, you, you don't have to worry about occupied land until about 1939. I'm worried about it right now. Fair. 1939? Uh, Didn't Anschluss happen in 36? Did it already happen? I don't think so. Anschluss happened in 1938. So 1938 then. That's when Germany declared that Austria was part of Germany. And Austria went, well, I guess. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're good. very confident in saying it. We're getting really bogged down in the details here. <laughs> I know. We're, I, we're good for the flight. <laughs> in my, yeah, in my head, all I'm hearing is just like, but then it like record scratches and goes back and starts it from the beginning. Can we say we get there? Yeah, you get there. I'm not. Five games days not to, later. Try not to overcomplicate the flight path, but uh, I guess someone else did the work for me. When we arrive, Sean Dublin is wearing cargo cocky cargo shorts and the very typical british explorers outfit and one of the explore africa caps you say cocky yeah khaki okay you said cocky which confused me at first but i knew what you're talking right. about which is the weird part yeah i just never I heard show, of it i show up and uh you know i i have my rifle that i'm holding and i look around very dramatically in my large boots so you dressed uh, up like Nigel Thornberry from <laughs> Nigel Thornberry wishes he could have the level of riz that Sean Dublin has. <laughs> I look good doing it. Do you have that uh, bowl hat? I don't know what to call yeah, it. Yeah, I said I had the Africa cap. Oh, okay. I've I meant I mentioned earlier in this episode that Sean Dublin uh, has been on Savannah tours before, and he feels like this clothing that it displays as much skin as possible will certainly be good for the jungle. It's hot, so we have to keep it. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's hot, so you need to expose as much skin as possible so you can sweat. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm trying to think. Would Sean have a bunch of tan lines that are now visible? Uh, n no, but he probably will at the end of this trip. <laughs> They've almost certainly faded. Plus, it's not like Theodore Roosevelt going on a year-long safari. Oh, Teddy Roosevelt. 
man was a wild man. He a was a wild rider. man. When was his his? Who's the no? Is I feel like I we're getting caught on things again. We are. Yeah, we are. We, we are. are. <laughs> these, these things that don't matter at the moment. I was trying to think who's the president at the time. I don't remember if it's Franklin at the moment or not. Yeah, no, I don't know. Not in Roosevelt. It's Roosevelt. It is okay. Okay. And he's also the most popular president in history at this point. Sounds about right. Uh, and I'm guessing everybody else is dressed appropriately for the situation. Yeah, I mean, I think the stuff I have already is pretty appropriate. Yeah, except Montre it doesn't really matter for him. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Dr. LaRue is also dressed up pretty much the same exact way as Sean, uh, with exception of uh, he's wearing a... Uh, I want to say he's wearing a beret just because. Is there... Is there something that I'm I don't understand about the jungle? Ah, uh, yes, it's extremely hot, so you want to make sure you expose all the available skin you can to the wind, so that way it cools you down. Because the humidity of the situation will just cause you to sweat while just standing there. Okay. What else can we expect in the jungle? Sunburn. Oh, uh, and wild prejudice, such as pumas. Uh, the occasional, uh, oh man, they're not crocodiles, they're, uh, caimans. Caimans, which are like crocodiles or alligators, whichever you want to call them. The cats were most persistent. I think Carl's just gonna, like, look to the side at Effie, looking for some sort of, does this all make sense to you kind of thing? <laughs> oh, oh. I'm sorry, I wasn't here for all of it. That's okay. So essentially we're in the, uh, Peru now. Uh, he, Carl had asked to explain what to expect in the jungle which the doctor had replied with uh, sunburn, mm -hmm. uh, big cats, uh, wild boars, caimans, which are just the South American version of... I know what a caiman is. Okay. I was just explaining to other people in case they didn't know. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Effie has had problems with them before. Get him, get him, Cotton. Get him. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to animal explain to you. Oh, oh, and, uh, <laughs> and be careful of piranhas. They are... You forgot the bugs. Oh, yes. Bugs. Bugs everywhere. Ah, yes, of course. How could we forget bugs? It's it's the Americas, I say Irishly. As mosquitoes are probably the worst thing ever. They are probably the worst part of this experience that we're going to have. I, I turn to Montre and I say, out of all of us, I believe that you're the only one prepared for 30 to 50 wild hogs to come out of those woods. <laughs> Keep your machine gun assembled and ready. You never know. You just never know. <laughs> it could happen at any time. Anyone. Anywhere. The jungle. Um, yeah, he nods. He's like, yeah, that's probably a good idea. There's The cats are actually the most persistent thing, honestly, from what I remember. Yes, very territory. You know, in think... case we do run into wild boars, I can. I do have my jerky kits that we can make jerky. I, I don't know if any of you are vegetarians and or vegans. If you are, I apologize. No, Doctor, we're actually not here to make boar jerky. We're here to solve the mysteries of the past. Of course, of course. I'm thinking too far ahead. Yeah, I mean, why would we make jerky? There's at least seven of us. We're absolutely, like, a single boar, we're going to eat that in, like, two days. We're just going to fry that bitch up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we will need a lot of boars. No, oh, yeah. do not go out of your way to hunt <laughs> boars, Doctor. We we are here for a... Per Why are all of our companions even less professional than we are? Carl's going to take a towel and keep it around his neck. Um, and he's going to put on a pair of work gloves and roll his sleeves up and get his guns and stuff in his backpack. Mantra just, not even asks, just throws the Doctor's pack on his back and gets his gun and just basically, once again, just slung it over his shoulder. He's like, all right. Uh, did you guys take the dingo with you? Uh, I feel like it would be in the plane. There's like, space to have loaded it. Yeah. Well, I guess my question, are you taking it out of the plane or are you just going to leave it in there temporarily? I don't, I mean, you'll have to tell me because we're going to a place these people have already been to, the doctor and Montre. Can it be reached by vehicle? So more important question, did we, did we land like in a river somewhere near this or did we land on an airstrip in a town even further away? Because if we're in the water, we can't get the dingo out. That sounds like quitter talk. <laughs> no, I agree with him. <laughs> Montreux is holding it up on his head. And he's like, <laughs> I understand how physics work, Pondo. <laughs> <laughs> so it would make a shorter trip if we landed as close as possible. So uh, that one thing, keep in mind, we also we said that we 
that you had figured out a way to rig up a ramp that could essentially work as like a C-130 ramp where it opens up at the back. Yeah, I want to say we brought it, but that we're not. You're not going to use it? it? Okay, because you could definitely get the dingo up there to a point, but after a certain point, it'd be a little iffy, though the dingo is made for... for We need heavy firepower. Yeah. I mean, we have no reason to believe we'll be in a gunfight, and technically, we've won every gunfight we've been in. I mean, we're still yeah. alive. Are we? <laughs> Some of us life. actually aren't alive, I say, turning to Matre. Well, he's alive by technicality. <laughs> technically, I didn't die to gunfire, sir. He's, oh, well, he's you not did die at some dead. point. <laughs> he's not any more dead than he was before we began. Yeah, yeah. He, his, his body died, but his soul did not yet. Now he's in a new body. I think this is a conversation that my English is not good enough for. Are we ready to go? <laughs> Of course, of course. I want to check to see if uh, your ya boy got back to me, the Spanish doctor, Ignacio. In the midst of your flight over after a couple few days, the transmission was back, bounced back to the lodge, then back to your plane, essentially. Uh, say that, yes, he would be available for a interview, and he would give you... Which would be in a couple of days, because he did assume a week as in seven days. Sure. We're just going to check in on him in the in this town here, wherever we've landed at. Right now, or you want to go journey into the jungle? Look, Hondo, I believe in conservation of plot elements. Okay. There is a strong chance that whatever this guy's looking for is the same thing we're looking for. And there is a incredible possibility that he will just lead us there to it. He will give us the directions and help us get there with no problem on our part. I feel like you don't trust the doctor to lead you there. But what's better than one? So about doctor, this interview, two doctors. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it's this interview. <laughs> I'll uh, out of character talk and just more so in character mind. This is for Effie. This doctor they're seeing is uh, uh, Cotton. Are you there? I'm here. Okay. Uh, this is the doctor Ignacio Cueva. Uh, he is the guy that your father actually worked with in the past who stole all his credit, <gasps> thus turning him into a fraud. Whether you reveal that or not, that's up to you. See him now? He's he's in the place, and that is who uh, Sean's about to get an interview with, essentially, to probe his mind. I'm asking if, like, I can see this guy. Uh, you will here in a second. Okay. Uh, since that's where you're going. So, Dr. Cueva, which I'm just going to call it that way for now on. If I say it, pronounce it wrong, it's going to be what it is. Dr. Cueva is currently uh, living his best life. Pretty much he's got an entourage of people, guards, guide, and he's sitting at the best seat of a small restaurant in a, uh, it's not not the best town, not the cleanest town, but it's pretty all right. He's managed to secure the best spot of it. Stands at around five foot nine, short brown hair, blue eyes, dressed pretty much the same way exactly as Sean and Dr. LaRue, minus the hat. And he has a, essentially a pocket monocle that's ready to go at any time. Perfect. I walk up to him where he's seated and I slap him on his left shoulder and I go in for a, a kind of handshake that is going to force him to stand up while I'm shaking his hand. And I go, bye, Scott. Is that Dr. Cueva? Dr. Ignatia Cueva? Ah, uh, yes, yes. I, uh, that, you, so you're forcing him to stand up? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So he's he's awkwardly standing up as uh, he currently still has like the napkin stuffed into his shirt. Yeah, yes. Are you, are you? I'm doing the convention handshake him and i don't mean like gaming convention i mean a professional convention when everybody's having lunch and someone just comes over and rather than sit at your table forces you to stand up and have a conversation with them oh, of course. oh God, no that's the worst kind because <laughs> <laughs> you feel too awkward because because if you stay sitting you feel awkward because yeah, yeah it yeah. creates an imbalance yeah ha- you have to stand up you're forced to your feet by the handshake yes you, you bloody monster okay yeah, he but I'm doing that it. so that I can turn him and lead him to my group. And I say, Dr. Cueva, I'm here with my my group. Doctor, or, I'd like to introduce you to Montre, Mr. Harlan Tanner, an American, uh, <laughs> Mr. Carl Bauer of Germany. And then I go to, and Miss Effie. And then I realize that you did say that guy's name was Dr. Dawson and Effie's last name is Dawson. And I go, just Effie, our translator. Yes. While Sean was greeting the professor the guy, Effie started listing, listing several curse words under her breath in French and several insults. It's like I'm doing a, 
I'm doing a vibe check on Effie. She looks upset. Okay. I'm going to do the thing where you pivot so that we were looking towards this group. And now I'm pivoting and forcing him to turn with me. Still in the handshake, by the way. Right. Uh, to go and look the other way. And I'm like, wow, the mountains of Peru over there. Fantastic. Fantastic. Doctor, what can you tell me about what you and your team are doing here? My understanding is you've bought out everyone in the local town to support your little dig here. What are you looking for? Um, yes, I... Man, that's a strong handshake. Can we sit down? Of course, of course. You know what? Montre, that's, he's our uh, our muscle. Montre, can you come over here, please, and help sit the doctor down and... Uh... That sounds like such a threat. Yeah, it is a threat. <laughs> Just, moves Just to be in. clear, I'd know that this guy's like a hack who steals other people's research. You do, you and do know he's a zone. hack. Yeah, I'm. I'm absolutely gonna fuck with him. <laughs> <laughs> we have established that fucking with people is definitely a thing that I do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, yeah, Montre lumbers over and pretty much, <laughs> while you're still shaking his hand, puts his hands on, puts his hands on his shoulders to kind of help guide him back to yeah, help seat him. Yeah. 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 If you'll come this way, sir. Literally four, a foot away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And does that whole, like, you, you, it looks like you're kind of uh, gently pushing him down, but you're also also forcefully pushing him down? I'm just putting a little weight on his shoulder. Doctor, I, I wanted to pounds. order some local uh, cafe. Uh, do the waiters speak English, perhaps? Or is there another? I don't speak Spanish, unfortunately. Do they speak another language? German? Japanese for some strange reason. You're, you're going to make me check. I want to say it's Portuguese, but I could be wrong. All right. Well, I don't know Portuguese either. Could you please order a coffee for me? Thank you so much. Oh, no. They speak Spanish. Okay. It, okay. Yeah, no, uh, he just speaks the Spanish to just have some coffee brought over to you. What can you tell me about what you're doing here, doctor? I mean, the funding your organization must be getting to fully lock out this town. Oh, you know, the... Not French. Just the typical knickknacks here and there. Dr. Cueva, your name is synonymous with discovery. Are you really telling me that you've come all the way across the world to Peru, of all places, to look for a couple knickknacks? Someone with your last name? Someone with your academic credentials? Well, well of course, there's more that comes with just finding said knickknack here. There's also the prizes that you get the instant recognition the sponsorships yeah, it just it all kind of coalesces into one thing all right i'm about to pull out my final gambit okay i reach mm -hmm. into one of my pockets and i pull out a journalist's little notepad and a pen and then i lick the end of the pen and i go dr cueva please I'm a well-respected journalist in the British Commonwealth. I'm here to get a top story about your latest discoveries. Surely you aren't just going to put me off with little knickknacks. I'm looking to make sure that your front page for the British people. I want your story to be told. He squints at uh, Sean a bit as he kind of judges your character. Yeah. Technically, uh, nothing give I've me, said so far is untrue. Give me a persuasion. Sure. When I say judge your character, it's it. I, it's not actually true. Like, I'm not going to roll for seven. it. I'm not denying your truth. <laughs> yeah, with a seven. <laughs> Yeah, with a seven. He he attempts at first to try to like lean towards you, but Montre is still kind of holding him back a little bit after he's been seated. Oh, I'm Montre, please, please. <laughs> you have to give him some room to wiggle around. Sorry, I thought he was having problems staying seated. I will move no, away, no, no. and I'll he'll just step back a step. My apologies. He can be very hands-on individual. Of course, of course. Big guys like that tend to be. Now he does this like the the typical leans in to whisper, but whispers a bit loud. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm writing down everything he's saying, by the way. Okay. Of course, from my sources, I did hear that there's a tomb somewhere around here of particular interest. Now, I was given a rough location of it, but I don't know exactly where it is. And said tomb has marvelous secrets. Interesting. Where did you get this lead from? I'm just curious about the process. Ah, uh, from a source of another source. And what kind of methodology are you using right now? You've gridded out the local jungle perhaps or you've asked locals for their secrets flights over the area maybe casting a wide net 
I pretty much hired the whole town to go look for it, and then once someone finds something of interest, I swoop in and get the information. I'm gonna look over at Carl and try to give him a significant PC glance. <laughs> okay. I would think that a view from above might be very helpful to you. You might be able to see things that the people on the ground wouldn't see. Would pass by hundreds of times a year, never knowing what secrets lie just around the corner from them. So are you offering to get a good, uh, get a bird's eye view? I stand up and I I try to get him to stand up with me <laughs> so I could take him over to talk to Carl. I mean, I've, uh, no, you did let go of the hand because you had to pull out the pen. I did let go of the hand, but yeah. I'm, I gesture vigorously with him. Uh, okay. Just come over here with me. Come in, come in. Mr. Bauer, please come over here. Uh, he, he reluctantly stands up. So the three of us are now standing next to the table with our drinks on it. <laughs> of course. Mis Mr. Bauer, this gentleman is looking for a very important temple that he hasn't found yet. And I was thinking that he should be taken up in the air away from here. It might all just turn out to be a distraction, but I'd hate for him to be led in the wrong direction. As long as, uh, as, long as I'm on retainer. I could certainly make that happen. Now, I want to make sure that you understand that I'm trying to get you to take him in the wrong direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that he's, he's not, he, well, he's too busy doing other stuff while we go to the temple. Yeah, Carl's trying to make it, because you've been doing a lot of positioning, Carl's trying yes. to maintain a position that you hired him. So yes. the approval for this is all on this guy getting yeah. approval from you. That, Correct. That's all Carl's doing. But he's otherwise, he's on board, he gets it. I, I'm checking above the table to make sure that we under because I'm you yeah know, I'm speaking a little shadily. Yeah, no, Carl uh, gets it. <laughs> my my plan is to distribute Kane on this mission to the job of keeping this guy from showing up at the last second and be like, well, 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 Mister Bond, Mister <laughs> Doctor Jones, so you have the uh, the artifact. Unfortunately, you don't know the local native people's language, where I've told them that you are a demon. No. <laughs> no, Pondo, we're going to get this guy in another fucking country. This guy's going to be in Brazil <laughs> looking at airfields. So, okay, I'm removing right. him from this scenario, <laughs> motherfucker. I will tell you what the scenario is, because this guy doesn't think like, he doesn't think that you're going to try to distract him. He thinks that you might take him up in the air and try to push him off what? without a parachute. <laughs> That's ridiculous. This threatening I, atmosphere. It is distracting, up. yes. That's true, I have been a little distracting. I look at him, and I say, you seem a bit tense right now, Dr. Cueva. I'm sure you can, I know that he's, I get in close, I go, I know that he's German, but he's very skilled. You don't have to worry on account of his place of birth. Extremely skilled pot. We, we came here in five days from the mainland. In, yeah, excellent timing, excellent timing. Absolutely skilled man. I mean, the amount of days mean nothing to him. The, the, the nationality means nothing to him. It's more of, he currently has a big guy of Montre behind him, which I'm guessing I know, is... I know that not, I am staging to make this guy seem like he's a racist. I'm trying to make him feel bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Uh... Hano, I told you I was going to fuck with this guy. <laughs> you, you did indeed. You are definitely fucking with this guy. Our safety standards are at the highest level. Mr. Bauer, you inspected the parachutes and the equipment before we left? I wouldn't have risked anybody else's lives without checking everything. Fantastic. Ignacio, I would be honored to allow you the use of my pilot and the plane for the next day or so. If you just want to go up there and look around. We even have a radio on board if you need to communicate with the ground. She's got plenty of endurance. We can stay up as long as you want. I give him a big smile. Okay. Okay. Well, that sinks it. You guys have this great knack of just splitting up the party. <laughs> yes, but I'm also splitting up the enemy party. This is true. You, you, you are taking the lead guy out of the situation. Yeah, Pondo. I've read a book before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Give me a persuasion. One more persuasion. At a minus two. At a minus two? Yes, at a minus two. I'm significantly less <laughs> cocky now, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Same roll. I will oh. join you on one condition. Uh, I have my guard entourage with me on the plane. Guard entourage? What are, what are we talking about here? Like my man Montre, just like one guy? Yes. Sure. I don't see why not. 
I don't think one passenger is going to throw off the weight. Shouldn't be a problem. <sighs> Perfect. When should we expect you tomorrow morning? My group and I, I believe, will be out on safari looking for the big cats. Uh, so I'm afraid I won't be able to join you up there. But uh, certainly feel free to spend the day in the air. How about tomorrow? If my, none of my people are able to find anything by the time that happens? No? Not good? Good? Tomo uh, yes, tomorrow. Okay. Absolutely. That, that was my pitch to you. I said tomorrow. Yes. You counterpitched me tomorrow. I don't understand what the counterpitch was. I was, it was just, I, I was agreeing with it tomorrow, I suppose. I, tomorrow, yeah. Yes. That okay. gives me some time to rest. It has been a long flight. Perfect. Now uh, I'll get back to my, my lunch. I am going to say in German real quick, uh, my apologies, doctor. Do you speak German? Uh, no. Does he say no? Or <laughs> does he just I'm telling answer? you he does not. He... Perfect. As blank. he departs from us, I'm going to pull Carl over to Effie, and in German, since we now know that he doesn't speak German, I'm going to say, Effie, what's going on with this guy? I've got a pretty good idea, but I just want to confirm it. What do you mean? You looked uncomfortable around him. I did some I research. He previously ruined a man called Dr. Dawson. That is that is my mortal enemy. Great. <laughs> I think you might have noticed I was fucking with him the whole time. I did not. Ah, my apologies. Well, I don't know why I'm apologizing for that. It's such a cottontail thing to apologize for doing something <laughs> positive for someone. Instead, <laughs> I bring the whole group in, and in English, which I switch back to, and I'm including the professor in this, I say, all right, so the plan is tomorrow morning, uh, Carl's going to take that guy up in the air and lead him in the wrong direction. Professor, we're going to gather supplies today, and tomorrow, once they're up in the air, our group is going to set out to the actual location of the temple to complete the mission. Is everyone good on this? I have two questions, actually. Yeah? <laughs> the first is, I should probably know where we're going so I don't go there. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, and second, if this guy's bringing thugs on board the plane... You said one guy. I think you can handle did one he guy. Say, did he say one guy? I, I, I talked to him. I said, like Montre, one guy. And he said, yes, one guy. Okay. I mean, Now, it's probably I... going to be a guy like Montre, but... Wow. I assume you could take a human like Montre. I don't think you could take Montre. I don't think I could take Montre either. I think you could take a human like Montre. It's your plane. I mean, look, if they do anything, just flip the plane upside down. You'll be strapped in a chair and they'll be dead. Just keep doing I, that for a minute. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the question is whether, whether or not you think uh, it's something that I need to be ready for or not. I don't think this guy is going to hijack your plane. Okay. I know we've had a lot of crazy adversaries, but this is just kind of a really mean academic guy. He doesn't know that we know anything. I've come here, I don't think I've been very nice to him, but I've given him a prime opportunity. He has no reason to suspect me at all. Other than the threatening atmosphere? Yeah, but I did it in kind of a jovial way. Sure. So it could be mistaken. Okay. Look, Effie, I apologize. I've set events in motion without having an opportunity to check with you, but I feel that... I wasn't lying when I said that I wanted to know more about this guy and that I was writing an article on him. I now feel that that article is probably going to be an expose about his past dirty deeds or maybe an obituary. We'll see. I mean, do you think I don't maybe know. there's the chance to do a little snooping and maybe, um, you know, restore, you know, restore reputations and ruin others? Maybe, but I want to solidly, we have a habit of getting off task Remember the, and I, I say this knowing that the professor was not there. Remember the, the orgies in Rome? We get off task a lot. And I just want to make sure this guy has no reason to suspect us. If we go snooping in his camp or do that thing we did with the, the SS officers in China, like he's going to have reason to distrust us. We need to sit back, relax, and let this go down according to plan for once, I think. Well, then I will I will give him a pleasant waste of time. Perfect. Exactly what I need you to do. I surely hope the GM can give you interesting seeds, because I've basically thrown your character out a window. <laughs> <laughs> Completely removed you from the story. <laughs> well, you'll know if, uh, if you hear a body hit the jungle <laughs> overhead. <laughs> Again, I really assume that it will be them who are dead. You are a accomplished individual. Well, that's, that's what I mean. Like, I fly ah, over you and just throw the bodies out. <laughs> oh, perfect. It's good practice <laughs> for when we go back to Ruslan. <laughs> <laughs>
Effie, if you don't want to do this, if you don't want to be a part of this mission, if you wanted to go down some other way, now's the time to let everyone know. I've made some assumptions. I've put some events in emotion that might steal your revenge from you. How are you feeling? It's fine. We can we can go to the site while he's busy. Okay. Since I'm not expecting him on the plane till tomorrow, I'm probably going to head back and clean up and lock a few things up. No reason to give him a bunch of free information if he's our competition. Fair enough. Yeah. I'll come help you. Yeah, let's get acclimated, guys. I immediately sit down and finish drinking my coffee. I'll go with Effie back to the plane. <laughs> Carl, I need you to do me a favor. What do you What do you need me to do? I need you to befriend him while he's in the plane with you and find out all of his deepest, darkest secrets so that we can expose him and ruin his life. Uh, I'll do everything I can. I'm not, I'm not exactly silver tongue, but Don't I'll try. Don't him. I want to watch him suffer. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize we were still playing Kekel, huh? <laughs> okay. I'll make sure that I'll make sure that he lives. We need to make sure that everything he has built is burned to the ground by the end of this. Okay. He um <laughs> I I take it uh I take it Sean's comments earlier were, were a bit of an understatement. What do you mean? He uh he didn't just ruin a reputation. He really hurt your family, didn't he? He discredited my father so that everybody thought he was a laughing stock and a fraud. The I guess the uh, fame came from my father's discovery. Uh, and now my father is dead. He never recovered from this. I see. I'll help. Great, thank you. If there's anything you want to, you want anything locked up? So, I mean, he's going to be on the plane. So if you don't want him to know who you are, anything you want locked up, just uh, here's the key to my locker. You can put anything you need in there. Um, I Pretty much everything I own is in this bag. Is there a journal, yeah. journal that says the revenge journal of Dr. <laughs> Effie Dawson? <laughs> Man, I yeah, really hate this, this guy and want to ruin his life. I'm glad that's, my friend put it on his plane. That's also in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> the plane has a dartboard that just has Ignatius face on it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take all of our, uh, all of the charts, all of our maps. Uh, I'm going to take, uh, like the book that I use to track our radio frequencies, I'm taking all of that stuff and I'm locking it all up in the navigator's desk. Perfect. Again, I feel so bad about proposing this strategy. <laughs> I mean, it's a good strategy. <laughs> it is a good strategy. I don't want to get Dr. Jones again. It's happened to us at least once. <laughs> <laughs> Having on our first adventure. Yeah, I definitely want this guy out of pocket for sure. Twice, technically speaking. Mm -hmm. I, I think those yeah, guys at the Roman Coliseum, yeah. I, I would consider that as it being Dr. Jones. I wasn't yeah. there for that. I was, it was pretty, I pretty much the same. In an orgy. It's just they beat you. Yeah. No, I mean, they beat you there. Yeah. I mean, he's also been ambushed. So, I mean, your your life is an Indiana Jones venture, essentially. <laughs> that was the whole point of this, to be honest. But yeah, I um, I, I scrub for sensitive information, make sure it's all locked up in either my cabinet or in the navigator's desk. Yep. The only thing I'm going to do before we move on to the next day. Is see if any of the teams he hired out has found a potential lead to where you want where they really want to go. Uh, I'll just roll a D4 on a four. He finds a lead that is the right way to go and not the wrong way. No, okay. Does everybody else head out before the other doctor arrives? Ignacio. Soon. I mean, we're going as a group. Entree's the pack mule. <laughs> going with me. Okay. So after they leave, as Carl sits by and stands by the plane, eventually he sees the doctor and was like... Oh, and because this came up on the train, I am locking the dingo weapon. All the, like, all this stuff is all locked in a, in a cabinet. So there's no available firearms on the plane. So, oh, okay. <laughs> but the ones they bring. Well, so I wasn't even I thinking mean... about that until you put that up now. I don't want to, I don't want somebody to dingo me from the back of the plane. <laughs> if they dingo you, that I mean, they would have other problems besides that. I'm I'm I mean, praying that nobody else can fly the plane. <laughs> Plus, if they dingoed you, they wouldn't be able to fly the plane. They would destroy everything necessary. Sure, that's true. I like to be thorough in my planning, though. Listen, not not <laughs> not a whole lot of uh, surfaces can handle a 50 cal. I mean, yeah. At the end, I I feel like you're alone in the, with up with them with their right. Yeah, it's me, this guy, and hopefully only one goon. Uh, it is not, in I, fact, I, I one goon. Yeah. It I is a it goon that like is a Montre. Yeah. But there's a couple other guys. How many people is he trying to bring on this plane? One other, not as Montre person. 
Okay, so three total bodies. So you feel like you could take the one guy, but the, the guy who's Montre probably not so much. Nah, I don't want to fist fight that guy. He's the he's the big henchman that you take a fight in in the middle of the movie, and you do the punch, and he doesn't get affected at all. Heavy? The guy yeah. that I have to kick into a propeller? Yeah. <laughs> kick into a propeller, trip up somehow. Open up the back while flying. Okay, well, I'm waiting by the plane. Shows up with him and his two differently sized friends. <laughs> yeah. Good morning. Ah, good morning. Great to see that the, uh, is the plane ready for the flight? Yep, it's all ready. I got it, uh, I got it ready earlier this morning. Excellent. I've got a couple of directions I want you to take so we can look overhead. Sure. Uh, if you want to come on aboard, we can sit down at the navigation table and we can plan this thing out. Of course, of course. Amazing. He's going to waste even more time. Kane's a friggin' genius. <laughs> So he essentially, he comes inside. He uh, takes a seat at one of the chairs at the navigation table and just immediately buckles in. And yeah, I'll, I'll lay out a map of the, of the northern part of South America and say, all right, um, when you walk me through some of the sites you want to see, uh, we'll compare that with some terrain and I'll put together a path for us. This is a bit broad for where I'm looking at. Uh, he... I, didn't want to, I didn't want to assume. That's okay. Uh, let me just, uh, he pulls out a map of his own where he has pretty much of a about like a 20 to 30 mile radius of the area. On his map, he has a couple of like red circles circled around as far as locations to look for. Uh, if we can get to these spots, that would probably be, or just fly overhead so we could peek over. That'd be, that'd be great. Sure. I mean, I know that the, I mean, having, flying in the, what is it called? The, sorry, English isn't my first language. The, the, the layer with all the, the greenery. Oh my god, now you can follow it up with being like, oh, sorry, how do you say from German this word? Just <laughs> keep killing time. <laughs> the jungle bed? I'm not sure. It's It makes it difficult to see the ground in some places. The, 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 the trees, yes. Yeah. So, uh, if you don't mind, I'll take your map. I'll compare to my terrain, the the map I have here, and I'll give us a I'll give us a route that hits them all up. But uh, does it in a way where we can stay closer to the ground, so it's easier for us to, you know, I can go pretty slow in this thing. It's got a lot of endurance, so we should be able to get a pretty good, pretty good view through, so we don't miss anything. Of course, of course. Okay. Uh, uh, so what? Mr. Is... Dublin told me that this is this is very important work. He's very excited to learn more about it. So I want to make sure we don't miss anything. Of course. Okay, so what are you actually, are you just going to jot down the areas or are you going to try to mess with it? Is he, since I was told beforehand where, uh, where our team is going, does it look like he's any of these circles overlap where my team's going? Uh, definitely one from what the doctor has showed you as far as the map goes. Since his plans, it's it it's the one to, to roughly about the, uh, technically a little bit, mainly east, but a little bit north. Okay. Um, I want to make that the last stop on a loop. Okay. And yeah, I plan to take off. I plan to fly very slow and very low. I'm going to set it up, and the whole thing is explained to be as thorough as possible. That we'll take a you know, we'll pass over the same site from like three different directions in case, you know, the angles change on the hillside and whatever. If he's, if his men need some binoculars, I have some in a box, I can loan them out. I'm going to be super friendly and accommodating about this. And then, you know, to be very open about it after I finish planning it out, I'll, here's the map, here's the routes. Uh, we got plenty of fuel for this sort of thing. If you think we need another pass, you think maybe we missed something, just let me know. It's no problem. Do either of your men have any uh, flight experience? The big guy does not. The little guy does a little bit. Okay. Do you have any? Okay. I might ask on occasion if you would be willing to go up to the engineer station and just take a look at things, make sure they all look normal to you. For... <clears throat> uh, he just nods. Yeah, I just, you know, safety is a big deal for me. Otherwise, I don't get to any more cop tracks. I'm sure you understand. He nods. Okay. All right, and then uh, I plan to take off and have a nice leisurely day. <laughs> I will be looking before we pass over the last circle. If we get closer to it, I am going to try to fake something mechanical in the plane. Okay, we'll get to that when that comes up. The main thing you note, you see note-wise is that the, the one that knows about the plane is doing his best to essentially latch on to anchor points as possible. Does it seem like he's uncomfortable? 
No, it's uh, it's just a situation of in case you know plane tips over or turbulence or whatever, he's not being just jostled around completely. Okay. He's like since he's going to be mainly walking back and forth. Okay. Uh, and I'll invite the doctor to come sit up in the cockpit with me, get a great okay. view, and I'm just going to be really friendly with him and ask him questions. And I'm not an academic, but you know the academics solve so many of problems for the world. You know, how did you get started? And yeah, he's just going to be super friendly with this guy while we fly around and look for stuff. All right. Sean's just drinking some coffee. Yep. In that case, the we cut back to your group that is currently being currently following the Doctor Larue again. Same dress as before. Uh, he has a bray for no real reason. There's no real like shade protection from it. It's just for some reason feels comfortable with it. Uh, we're going to see. This if guy he... actually going to turn out to be some sort of communist rebel? No. He studied under Stalin? Uh, no, he did not study under Stalin. Okay, great. Well, Professor, how long is it going to take us to get there? Because our man has two armed men looking over his shoulder, so we need to, you know, chop-chop this. Of course, of course. We will get there probably next week. Out of game time. But uh, it, it, it'll it take some time. Like hours or days? Uh, probably a couple of hours. Okay, fantastic. Because it was a full week. I feel like someone should have mentioned that, specifically <laughs> Montre, but... Uh... No, no, it, it'll take a couple hours to make it back, or make it to the t- where the tomb is, as far as us, it'll be next week. Say, Professor, we've spent a lot of time shit-talking Dr. Ignatius Cuevo. What do you know about him? Uh... By the way, I've started referring to you as Professor because I call him Dr. Cuevo, and I want to make it clear that the two of you are different characters. No, it's fair. No, it's fair. Uh, as easily as possible. And Doctor sounds more evil than Professor. You know, I, I have noticed that Doctor tends to be more of evil characters in, like, storybooks. Yeah. Well, so- Professor implies intellectual, which is useless. So <laughs> Doctor implies a sort of vitality. Professor, you know, like a surgeon. that, oh. When you say Professor useless, that, that hurts a little bit deep. But that. But you're not a professor. You're a doctor. Okay. I'm just calling you professor as in a term of endearment. Yeah, uh, so Dr. Ignacio Cueva, what do you know about him? Uh, I, I know of his findings. It wasn't until recently, until you pointed out that you that he's a hack. And as he is, has blatant, I'm surprised that he hasn't been brought to light as of yet to how blatant he is about it. But I guess that's what you get when you have money and influence. Sure, it'd be a real shame if someone wrote a really scathing article about him. Uh, I suppose. It doesn't seem like that'd be a sh- Is that sarcasm? <laughs> I don't know yet. <laughs> I have me confused. <laughs> anyway. I. Th- here's the thing. I want to keep our options open. Our enemies usually wind up being shot to death. I'm trying a new way of solving our problems with bullying and intimidation. Interesting. If, it, if that doesn't work, we can easily go back to shooting people. I say, usually the bullying and intimidation leads to shooting, but I guess, yeah, so I guess you are on the right track. Just to be clear, I'm not trying to kill this guy at the end of this. I just want him discredited. I see. But if we have to kill him on the way out, we will. Well, I mean, it seems like you did set up to <laughs> the best possible way for him not to get shot. Nah, I yeah. guess... Trying to do things a little differently lately. I see. But tumble in the air should be a different change. Kind of like a... Sorry, did you say a tumble in the air? Yes. yes. You think we're just going to push him out of the aircraft? Was was that not the plan? No, we were just going to fly him around for a day. Oh, just to, just by judging the, the aura of the situation yesterday. It looked, sounded like you were about to push him out of the air. I mean, if we have to. I mean, I suppose you I... could just, like... There's only one person in that aircraft. Who do you think is going to fly it while they're pushing him out of the air? That doesn't necessarily have to push him out of the air. Just, you know, tumble, roll around the plane and hope to... That's true, yeah. I was thinking that if you just barrel rolled the plane while they were walking around, they would all die. Now, just about the the ergonomics of the plane, I I don't think barrel rolling would be that easy in the Catalina, but... He's a good pilot. Fair. I can say he's the best pilot I've flown with. Is he the only <laughs> pilot you've flown with? I mostly travel by ship. So I'm yes, British. got it. Of course. 
We love ships, man. But yes, it does Railway, seem like you, you have power. successfully took out that possible scenario out of the situation. Now, hopefully we don't run into anybody else, but who knows? While we're walking, I just turn to Harlan and say, Harlan, you haven't done anything this episode. What's going on with you, bud? I am simply waiting for us to get there. It didn't seem prudent to try stealing him from him so immediately, even to get this information if we're trying to be diplomatic and sneering him yet. But perhaps since he's already on the plane, we should look for more information. I'm sure his guards won't be so attentive without him there. Perhaps we can find something more. I mean, our hope is that his people never even reach this site, right? Indeed, but you said you're also looking to ruin him. Perhaps he yeah. has something useful for that. Oh, you, so you're implying that we send you to sneak into his camp? If we're if we're no longer competing with them, we should. I should have something else to do, unless you do believe you need me. Yeah, I actually was going to check to see if you had any ideas on what you could do at this temple. Like maybe sneak ahead or stay behind while in cover to warn us of anything and chase out intruders. But yeah, I guess your big limelight would actually be sneaking into his camp and getting evidence of all his wrongdoing. I slap him on the back and I go, hey, nice plan. All right, I shout ahead to Effie. I go, hey, Effie, Arlen's going to sneak into his camp and find all his evidence of wrongdoing. Sounds great. Nice work, Arlen. She's been feeling really <laughs> down because this guy basically killed her father. I, oh, that is unfortunate. <laughs> you don't have to put it so bluntly, but I suppose that is the situation that did happen now you speak of it. I turn to Luke and I say, Professor... I want you right now here in the middle of the jungle in your beret right this second to give me in one sentence an alternative explanation that is less blunt than that. And I stop in front of him so he can't walk any farther forward. <laughs> I mean, the situation from what I recall was that he, well, was discredited of all sources of major organizations and... Uh, established foundations, which led to him pretty much not being able to get a job for what could be claimed to be, which I think, I believe... You got to... me. This is definitely less blunt and much more obtuse, and I turn and I start walking. <laughs> oh, are we done? <laughs> okay. So is, is Harlan splitting up then? I don't know that we're splitting Harlan off right now. My understanding was that Harlan was going to go... Once we finish this up, Harlan would go break into the camp. Okay, okay. I would, listen, I would never not want this group to split up into a third group going alone <laughs> into an armed camp. I would never want that to not happen, but it, I don't think that was what Montre's we were plan for things, usually. Oh. That has happened, yes. <laughs> He's like, I'm just going to go over here and go with Ruckus. You guys be safe, because I will get shot before you will. It's fine. Okay, we'll save all that for next episode then. So we all got two level ups, right? Uh, no, no, no level ups. Sean's heart grew two sizes this episode. That's exceedingly <laughs> generous. <laughs> He's got like a size. That's. I've got I've got two plans. He's thinking to try to deal with this guy. Okay. The first is I haven't decided which one I'm going to do. I've got two ideas. The first is to try to is to hope that this guy is. It's, it's basically to just pretend like we're flying over the last circle when we're flying over something that's not quite over the circle. Okay. <laughs> we'll see how that works out. Um, and if we start having an argument over that, then uh, take a mechanical thing and have to land in a river somewhere to take a look at it. We'll see how that works out. Okay. Are we good for next week? Or I have no current idea if there's anything in my way. Okay. I will be here next week. I swear to God, my plan next week is to not showboat the entire time. <laughs> I tried not to do it this time, but I failed I, really badly. I don't believe you. <laughs> let me let me say this, Pondo. Okay. Name one skill that I have used when in previous ruin dives. You haven't gone on any ruin dives. Correct. This is your first time not avoiding the supernatural happenings. Correct. I am still probably going to stay outside, however, and let the rest of the team Get their limelight while I stand guard. All right. Also, again, to be clear, looking at my skill list, ruin diving, not in my forte. Ah. You may recall <laughs> that my forte is talking to people, knowing things, 
and being rich. It's not wrong. I am going to up your wealth back to a D10 because you did work out a deal. What do I need to do to get it back to a D10 plus one? Uh, it's, it's already at a plus one still. Perfect, perfect. The, the plus one's from the aristocrat. Perfect, perfect. All right. I'm waiting to... I can't wait to see how the uh, the one card that Montre has was... Uh, the love romantic. interest card? Yeah, love interest. Can't wait to see how that ends up. Yeah, I may I mean, have to hold on to that for several episodes. No, no. You're going to use it the instant the knife comes out and you put somebody's soul in that suit. You play the, <laughs> the love interest card right then, and then it's like, <gasps> Janine, yeah. my old comrade soldier lover? <laughs> Could it be you? <laughs> you would do that to me if you were running this. <laughs> <laughs>